Welcome to the AWS Account Administration and Networking for Higher Education presentation. This is the Audit and Access Logging section. We're going to be talking about CloudTrail, S3, ELB, and VPCs. First of all, let's talk about CloudTrail. AWS CloudTrail enables you to have an audit log of your AWS API calls in your account. With AWS CloudTrail, you get a record of such things as the identity of the caller of the API, the time of the API call, the source IP address, the request parameters, as well as the response elements. It also gives you a history of all API calls for your account, whether they're generated by the AWS Management Console, the AWS Command Line Tools, the AWS SDKs, or higher level services such as CloudFormation. The log files for AWS CloudTrail are recorded to S3, or they could also be recorded to Amazon CloudWatch logs as well. You can use CloudWatch logs to create metrics and alarms based on the log data. As an example, you can create an alarm if the root activity events are greater than one. In other words, if somebody logs in using the root credentials into your account, you can generate an alarm based on that. You can also set up an alarm for things like deleting items out of S3. So if you have a crucial S3 bucket with critical data in it, and you have greater than say 10 events of item deletion from there, you can generate an alarm from there. And so you can make these alarms customized to the actions that you consider high risk and that you want to be alerted on. CloudTrail can be enabled either globally or on a per region basis. I would recommend just enabling it globally across your account. You can also write your CloudTrail logs to an S3 bucket in another account. So for example, if you have an account that's owned by your InfoSec team, you can have every other account record its CloudTrail logs to that InfoSec team's AWS accounts S3 bucket. S3 access logging. Again, this is another must-have feature, much like CloudTrail. The difference here is that you have to enable this feature on each bucket separately. So it's off by default, and you can't enable it globally across all buckets in your account, so you want to make sure that you enable it on every bucket. And this is essential for routine auditing and incident response. So if you're trying to determine if somebody accessed data in one of your S3 buckets, you need to have this feature turned on in order to be able to figure that out. What you want to do is create a bucket in each new AWS account just for the purpose of storing these access logs. Then you want to ex use an explicit deny permission in this bucket to use your roles in that account. So what that does is it prevents users from deleting the logs in this bucket in order to make sure that these logs are valid for an incident response investigation. Optionally, you can also capture and process Amazon S3 object level API activity, such as what's recorded in these access logs through CloudTrail as well. So that might be another option that you want to consider. VPC flow logs. So VPC flow logs uh, capture information about allowed and denied traffic, such as source and destination AP addresses, ports, protocols, packets, byte counts, and actions. And these are in enabled either on a per VPC level, VPC subnet level, or individual network interface level. You can send these logs to CloudWatch logs, and then from CloudWatch logs, you can export these logs to S3. You can integrate them with uh, third-party solutions such as Splunk. You can send them to an Elasticsearch cluster. So there's a bunch of things that you can do with these VPC flow logs once they arrive in CloudWatch logs. You can also create custom alarms and metrics. So for example, if you have certain IP addresses that you want to alert on that are accessing your VPCs, you can set alarms on that.